Hey everybody, John with Owl Vans, and if you can't tell already, we are doing the B2 carrier install. The Owl B2 is one of our kind of signature carriers. I developed it to be able to allow a bunch of different accessories to mount, including bikes and boxes and mini Sherpas, and really the sky's the limit. So uh, we're gonna go through installing this carrier today on this. This is actually a van we just picked up. It's a beautiful blank white canvas, so the install should go quite smooth. There are a couple of different door types on uh, the Sprinter as we talk about installing this. A couple of things we wanna keep in mind. So let me put the carrier off to the side and talk a little bit about your van first and then the hardware kit and we'll jump right into what we're gonna to do to install the carrier. So first and foremost, before you start any installation with an OWL product, you wanna confirm that you have 180 hinges. You can learn more about this on our website. Most of our items actually, you can scroll down to see the difference between a 180 and a 270 hinge. You can quickly identify 180 hinges by the holes that are in the hinges. We use this to mount the product, so that's why it's gonna require those hinges as well as stopping the door from going all the way around so your gear doesn't impact the side of your van. That's a good thing, don't wanna smash up your van. Other thing about a door. This is actually only something that's come up recently, and that is, the structure of the door. So we have sold a lot of these racks with tons of really happy customers. I think that's where we get some of our branding and reputation from. Recently, we've noticed that some vans, and we don't know if it's a bad sub supplier or something. Can you guys see that, how wonky that is? We call it a wonky door. You see how this van has almost no structure? I haven't even popped this door open yet, but I guarantee what the issue is, is that there's these fins inside that need to be glued it's basically the structure of the door glued to the outside cosmetic sheet metal of the door. And it doesn't seem like much, but when all those are glued, everything functions great. And if those aren't glued properly uh, when your van arrives, then you're gonna have uh, possible issues down the road. The other thing to keep in mind is, as we go, you wanna make sure you maintenance these outside bolts on the carrier to make sure that you have a proper, properly functioning carrier for years to come. Uh, you can check out maintenance stuff on our website. Uh, also, if you need to switch hinges from a 270 to a 180, we have a video for that as well. Uh, area of note, the bottom hinge, the bottom 180, when it is off the van, you cannot close it and operate it with your hands. It is too stiff. It will operate once it is on the vehicle. That so getting in, the first thing we're gonna do is take off the inner door card, and that's what we're gonna inspect to make sure that our door is glued properly to have the structure that we need. There are also multiple types of door cards, so this kind right here is kind of what you'd get. This is like a cargo van, no rear window. That's what you're gonna get right there. Now there's other types of vans, and here's where I will splice in a video of me doing this before and showing how you install a B2 with say a uh, door card or a panel that's on a Revel or a Storyteller and how to get that off. So here's that. So you hear that pop, there's just a little orange pop rivet. Most of the time these come right out. If they do break, we include some extras in the kit so it's not a big deal. As I said, you slide your hand in. Just so you can see this a little better, you can see how I'm working that, uh, that panel off around the trim ring. And then this will actually, there'll be something we can reach in there and release this and move it. Uh, but you really don't need to, it can kind of just stay on. You just remove it before you put the panel back in. So a couple of snaps land, landed up on the ground, not a big deal. Sometimes you will get them stuck back in the door. When you're taking these snaps out of the door, you want to get, let me see if you can see this well. You kind of want to get below, see if we can zoom in. You want to get below this part to pull them out of the door. Get something down in there and pop them out. And then you just put them back in the door panel when you get back to doing the final install. There, can you see that? I guess you can kind of see that. See that, how that levers and it pops out of there. There's the same thing on the bottom. Pop those out and this whole thing comes off. All right, now if you don't have that kind of door card, we'll jump in here to get this door card off. Let me grab some tools and we'll get going with that. So to get going, let's talk about the tools we're gonna to use for this. It's pretty simple tools, and in fact, the install on a B2 is fairly simple and straightforward. First, you're gonna need a wrench. This is a uh, 7 seconds 
hex Allen drive. This is going to be used for some of the bolts on the back side of that. I've got a 9 16th open-ended wrench. This has got a ratchet on the back side, which is kind of nice. These are nice to have. So we've got a screwdriver, this a flathead. If you have this type of uh, cargo carrier door card, flathead works really well. This is um, I don't know what you call it, like an interior trim removal tool. This is really good for popping out those kind of orange rivets. In fact, I think I've got some here. If you have the other type of door card, you'll have lots of these. Of course, I drop it. Uh, these little rivet things, and this is really good at popping those out. This is also good at getting rid of these kind of pop rivets or... For opening these up, you can use a screwdriver and just kind of slot it in there and twist it back and forth. And you can kind of pull backwards and just kind of lever these on both sides. You see how that's kind of getting loose. And then once you get it a little loose, you can use one of these tools or just keep using the flathead to pop it out. Once you've got that kind of top hat, you see how that's popped out. Now you can just basically pull this out. Of course, if you were a little bit stronger and tougher than me, you could. There you go. And that's what that looks like once it's out. You see how this works? So as you push this in, it expands those fins and that locks it in place. All right, so you pop these out. I won't make you sit through that. We'll do that all sped up. So once you've got all of those panels out, you see how this is now loose. And then you can kind of just maneuver this around this handle. See how I'm doing that? Kind of sliding this around to get it, just kind of work it back and forth to get it off there. Now you've got access to the interior of the door and just as I suspected, let's take you off here. So here's the issue. See this? See how that's loose and not fully down? Same this thing here. So when you have that, again here, when you have that problem, up oh, this one, you've got to make sure that's glued. So I'm going to put at the bottom a link to the product that we use. You want to put a decent amount of glue on these parts because these are the structure of the door. This is what's gonna keep this sheet metal strong. You notice how flexible that sheet metal is. If you don't glue these uh, before you install the carrier, you could have issues down the road. So we just wanna make sure that you're as structurally sound as possible. So that's what we're gonna glue there. And then this, I think I showed this in the other video, but there's a little uh, thing that clips into the door right here and you just lever that out and you can move this and it's the same top and bottom and then that just hangs. So that's actually more important for putting this all back together. Then we're also gonna look for that spot to get in there uh, because we're gonna have to put a nut on this deal on the back side of it. So now we're gonna get started with the actual carrier. This is your hardware kit. Let's talk about what is happening in your hardware kit. Of course, the most important thing that anyone ever buys or anyone ever wants when they buy off-road gear, stickers, and patches, so there you go. And your card, so that you can access this video, which if you're watching this video, you've clearly already found this card or you wouldn't be at the video. All right, so we'll put that stuff aside. Now let's get into this. This is a gasket that is gonna go on this third mounting point between the door and the carrier, so we're gonna set that aside. Don't need that quite yet. These are your, the, in this bubble wrap, are your inner door plates. So the way these things work is these go inside on the inside of the hinges so that you can mount things to them. If you come with me traveling over here, see how that fits right in there? So that, see there's two ways. This backwards way won't work. It kind of is made to fit the contour of that direction. And then down here, you can see that the holes are not quite perfectly aligned. And so when you hold this up to put it in, you see one hole is closer to, to the edge and you put the two holes towards the van and the one that's closer to the edge up that way. Okay. So that's how we do those inner door plates. Now they're not going to stay in place. In fact, of course, because I'm shooting a video, one just fell while I was doing that, but those are not going to stay in place until you have the carrier and the bolts through them. So that's going to be kind of set in place. And it really does help. Honestly, uh, if you do have friends, I'm a little short on friends. Maybe you can help me. If you do have friends and people uh, are willing to give some time to help you with your van, it does help to have someone else while you're doing this install, but you absolutely can do it by yourself. I am doing it by myself to prove it to you. Now what we're gonna do, oh wait, I didn't finish the hardware kit.
hardware kit V1 and a B bag. So the V1 is going to be what's used to mount the carrier to the van. The other bolts are what is going to be used when you mount the, uh, the bike rack bar extensions on the B2. We'll get to that later after we've got the rack installed. So mounting this rack, what I like to do is get this one, you put, okay, so you grab one of these bolts. I believe they're all the same, let me double check. They are all the same length, so even I can't screw this one up. You grab one of these bolts, and we're gonna stick it through this, okay? And then we're gonna put this back up in that top hinge. And if you wanna put the bottom one in, you can, but realistically, we're kinda of gonna do one at a time. So I, I like to just put one bolt in at a time. And then what I like to do is get the carrier on there loosely. Basically, you take, now you're supposed to put these nuts on or sorry, excuse me, you're supposed to put these washers on with these nylock nuts. But we want to get the carrier on first so we can drill our single hole that we have to drill. It's super easy. Don't worry about it. I know you have anxiety. We do it all the time. No one's ever screwed on up yet. Uh, we'll drill that hole. That'll be super easy. But these uh, have nylocks on them, so you're not going to be able to spin them down with your hands. So we'll just get them on there to hold the carrier in place, and then we'll go through our next steps. So again, not going to use the washers right now because we just want to get the carrier in place. We can always go back and add the washers later. So I'm closing the door partially. I'll try to get you guys a better view. Thankfully, the carrier is not that heavy. So we're just gonna come over here and try to get the carrier on those first bolts. So it's a little bit hard and you may drop one, but I'm gonna put this, of course I did. So I'm gonna put this first one on. And if you rest, the, once you get the bolt, it's kind of hard to explain, I'll explain it in a second. So of course I got one. So now I drop the other one. Oh, there we go. It's on the ground. This is why having a friend helps because inevitably you drop something and then you need the friend to pick it up. All right. So now I got that bottom one in as well. And I'm just going to spin on one nut to just hold everything in place. Because what we're going to do is just use this to mark our hole where we're going to drill our third mounting point. Oh, I wanted to explain to you how I held that bolt in place. What I like to do, see how this is kind of, come on this side. See how this is kind of crooked? That bolt is crooked. That's because the weight is, the, the bolt's loose and the weight is hanging on it. But when you slide the carrier on, if you let that weight sit on that bolt, it'll hold that bolt from pushing out the backside while you lightly screw that on to hold the carrier in place. Just a little tip I've learned from doing this hundreds and hundreds of times. But basically what you want to do is tighten up these two bolts to get the carrier at the height that it's gonna ride at, and then we're gonna mark that hole. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting the wrench back in the, the back side of this bolt, and then I'm using the open-ended wrench on the front side to kind of tighten this up. And in fact, while I leave this here, you do want to put the other bolts in, I realized, to help raise the rack up a little bit. What that does is it just helps line up both holes before you tighten stuff down. Now again, you don't want this sag to be in this hinge. You see how the carrier is sagging on that loose bolt? You kind of want, you want this tab to basically line up with that rubber kind of grommet right there. And if you do replace your 180 hinges, make sure you pull that rubber uh, kind of landing area out of your old hinges and put them into the new hinges. But you basically want this as I move this up to kind of, oi, yep, that just happened. You want to kind of center it on that hinge. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So now I'm just lifting slightly with my knee because again, I'm solo. You probably have a friend. I'm lifting slightly with my knee to kind of get this in the right position. I've got that snugged. We don't need to crank down on it. We don't have a washer in there. We're just holding it at the right height. Now that's all lined up down here. How does that look? All right. So we got it now. What you'll have at the, on the bottom is the carrier's loose. So it's going to want to sag and move towards the tail light. So you want to kind of center that on that hole. 
and again tighten that, just snug it down so we can get this third mounting point in. All right, so that all looks good. So for this next part, I just double checked with one of my esteemed colleagues who, you know, I'm getting a little bougie. I'm in the office doing emails all day and I haven't been installing this stuff as much as when I first created it. So it is three and a half inches, but that's when you got a window and the window sits slightly higher and that puts us right at about three and a half where the bottom of that window is. If you're measuring from a cargo van, it's probably closer to about three from this lip, uh, three and a quarter. So that's kind of where you want to be. Uh, again, this rack, as long as you adjust the hinges properly and that space where you can drill the hole is probably inch and a half, two inches wide. So it's not critical, but just want to pass that along. So now we've got the area that we're going to drill this. And so what we're going to do is come in here straight as if we're a drill bit and just put a dot there and kind of make sure that that dot is centered in that hole. The camera's making it look like it moves the parallax, but it's pretty much centered. This is now where we're going to take the whole rack off. I know it feels like we're going backwards. Bear with me. We're going to take the whole rack off and we're going to drill the hole with no rack on. It's really just two bolts. We only put two bolts in. So we're going to take that off. We're going to drill the hole. We're going to paint the hole and then we're going to put the whole rack back on and you're done. Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to do, oh, show you the gasket. So this gasket, when we're all said and done, is going to slide in here between the door and the B2. And that does a couple things. It keeps water and moisture out. It also cushions it against the door. So we'll put that in last. But for now, we're gonna take the rack off and we're gonna drill a hole. All right, my favorite part, drilling the hole. I know you're nervous, don't worry about it. I guarantee you, especially if you got a built out van, there've been a thousand holes drilled in this thing. When I first did this, I was all nervous. Now, vans pull in, the drill's going before they even park. So you find that hole, it's pretty simple. If you want to, if you're worried about the drill walking, you can drill with a small pilot hole. You can also, if you're worried about, now this is all kind of inside, it's covered by most door panels, but if you're nervous about it, you can also stick something behind where you're drilling in case you pop through. I've done this a lot, so we know that's not gonna happen. Oh, drill bit size, this is, I believe 25 64 so it's one step up from a 3 8 inch bolt. Let's get you a better view of the carnage. Light pressure. You don't want to push too hard. Let the drill do the work. There we go. There it is. We got sniped. So you can see there's some bare metal in there. So this is where we're going to paint that. Some people varying levels of OCD because I've done this so much and I know this is going to get covered up. I'm just going to hit it with a rattle can and uh, that's what I do. If you want to take some time and get like a Q-tip and dip it in spray paint, what you can do is take spray paint, shake it up real good, spray it into like a paper plate or bowl, get a Q-tip right in there. The reason I use spray paint, it dries really quickly. I'm just doing this for a little bit of overspray. And again, the gasket and the, the, the carrier are going to cover all this. So you don't really need to be that accurate. The other thing I want to keep in mind here is there are plenty of folks out there with no drill. They've copied our products, but they haven't copied the engineering. We invented all this stuff. So we've been down the paths. Believe me. If there's a way to do this and mount it soundly and structurally so you can carry hundreds of pounds without drilling a hole, we've tested it and it's failed. So the folks that out there selling that stuff, they might tell you a cool story about how it works or how they innovated because it's no drill. In reality, uh, typically you're just setting yourself for, up for problems down the road. I know I'm probably preaching to the choir because if you're watching this video, you already purchased the product, but you should feel good about what you purchased. We work really, really hard to test this stuff. We've got millions of miles on the carriers that uh, we've had on the road. Thousands and thousands of people have done this exact thing and it's been error-free, problem-free for years. So I'm gonna hit this with some spray paint. Everybody around here makes fun of me because I love this stuff. Rust-Oleum, Rust Reformer. It's matte, black, great color. Dries very, very quickly. You gotta shake it up. There's nothing you can't do with a good rattle can.
All right, here we go. Test it somewhere else first. Yep, it's spray paint. You want to make sure you kind of get all the angles of it. And then you let it dry. <sighs> Can I sing the Jeopardy theme song? Am I going to get like taken down on YouTube for not paying a royalty? I don't know. I don't really have much to say. I'm just trying to waste time while it dries because I know you. I know you. If you're anything like me, you're going to rush this and you're going to peel this right now and you're going to start installing it. But you didn't let the paint dry. Let the paint dry. Now I can do that because I'm me and I have problems, but you can't do that. Pretend it's been five minutes. Promise me? Promise me? Pretend. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I'm a regular Picasso. Now we're going to reinstall the rack. I won't show you that. You already did that. We're going to redo everything we just did. And once we get it on, I'm going to show you the final steps. We're at the point where the rack is on but loose. Let me show you what I mean. We've got all the bolts in, but they're still very loose. Okay, and you see we've got a washer behind all the bolts now. So before we tighten those down, what we want to do is take this bolt again with a washer and then we want to put that rubber gasket in there so that's going to tuck in you can see there's a long side and a short side let me do this we're going to close this so you can see better and what we're just going to do is we're going to make sure that hole lines up properly and the way we do that is by putting this gasket in there and then so the gasket goes behind I had mine backwards there we go if you look you want the side nearest the edge to go towards the emblem and it's really easy when you put it on there you can just look and as long as the slot lines up with the carrier and the gasket you're good and now what I'm going to do is just lift lift the carrier until I can put that bolt through that hole we have. We don't have to tighten it. All we're doing is holding the rack aligned with where that bolt is. Now if I go back and tighten these, that third mounting point is going to be in exactly the right spot. If I tighten those first, we might have that slightly off because there's a little bit of play in the hinges. When you're tightening these hinge bolts, you want to go to about 30 foot-pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, that's snug but not crazy snug. And I almost forgot as I was tightening this down, it's always a good idea if you don't plan on taking the carrier on and off very much get some red Loctite and what you do is just dab it on the bolts where the nuts bottom out it just means you don't need to check uh, your carrier as often you still need to check these that they're snug you know certainly after a few hundred miles after you install the carrier check them then I would check them periodically throughout the year if you do a lot of off-roading Maybe check them after every few trips if you got a lot of weight on there. Maybe after every trip. What happens is these hinge bolts are intended to be kept tight because that limits the amount of force that can go into the door. The third mounting point is really to just keep the carrier to move with the door. Third mounting point being this one. We really don't want to, <laughs> we really don't want to impart very much force on there. So we make sure that the hinge bolts are tight. That's going to make sure that everything stays nice and tidy when it comes to the door. As I get my tool back. Mounting to the hinges is absolutely the right way to do this. You do not want to have things that mount to the door. That is a big no-no because the door is not really made to carry weight. A hinge by design is intended to carry load. So you know that you're putting load in the areas where the device it's hooked to is intended to carry weight. We've got the hinges tight, about 30 foot-pounds per bolt. And now what I just did, I don't know if you saw, but you jiggle this a little bit. And then you want to see that the carrier is sticking off of the door. And this is purposeful. I just talked about wanting to be delicate on this drawer, uh, door front. And so we, we have a standoff here. And you actually want that carrier to stand off. This one's at about half an inch, which is right on spec. We're going to put the spec on the bottom of the screen. If this is off a little bit more, a little bit less, that's fine. But you definitely don't want it 
touching the door. Now when you tighten those, it may be touching the door because the bolt is caught on something. So you want to jiggle it and make sure you get it free. Now we're going to go in and put a nut on the backside of this bolt and you're pretty much uh, mounted with the carrier. You just have the armors to put on. Now if you have the Revel or Storyteller or whatever, you're going to have a big access point. It's going to be way easier. If you have this kind of van, it's a little harder because you got to kind of reach up the, in there. The, whole, the bolt is about right there. You got to get up in there with a washer. You got to be dexterous, my friends. Work on your finger exercises. You don't want to push that bolt back through. There's a couple of ways to get in here with your hands, but just try it out. See what's best for you. Sorry, I'm trying to do it and not block the camera. But in reality, I stick my hand on the bolt so I hold it in the same spot, and then I just kind of fish my finger. Oh, almost dropped it. And then it would have lived in the bottom of the door forever. Just kidding. You can fish it out. All right, so we got the washer on there. Now, if I was smart, I'd have the nut in my hand. Oh, it's just out of reach. So if you don't want to cross thread the bolt. If you're getting any kind of like it's not spinning on easily, what you can do is hold it with your finger and spin the, the bolt on the other side and back it off a little bit. And you'll kind of hear a click and then you restart. It's a good way to stop things from cross threading. This part's real simple now. Now that we're this far along, we can come in here with our tools, get up there on that nut. All right, my open-ended wrench is on it. And then you come around, helps to have long arms, and then you can start tightening from the backside. And as you tighten this, that gap is gonna start tightening up. I'm gonna rotate this so you guys can see better. So we've got our gasket kind of misaligned. It's a little bit up, I gotta back it off a little bit. All right, I went too fast. You just wanna adjust your gasket like that. See how the gasket's now in line with everything? And then we can go back to tightening. And this does not need to be super tight. You just want that gasket compressed. And that's pretty good. So now I can take this wrench out. That, my friends, is a B2. Looks simple lots of functionality. Last thing we're going to do is install the bike bars. It's pretty straightforward. And then we're going to put our inner door panel back on and you're pretty much ready to roll out for your next adventure. If you have been paying attention, you've got one bag left. This is your bag for your arms and make sure you don't get your bags mixed up because these have shorter bolts and those are the only ones that are going to work. So the way this works, and again, it's a little bit fiddly, as I like to say. You gotta be a little dexterous. Dexterous is not a type of sugar. Here's the way I do this. And you can mount these at different heights depending on if you're using a box or not. So washer and nut go on the back side. I take this, and let's say we're going to the top one here. Then I rest it on my shoulder. If you're not as tall, get a, a phone book or something. And then what you're going to want to do is put the washer on the back side of that bolt and hold that up. And then you're going to want to pull the bolt off a little bit. You just want to get that nut on there with the washer and then see how this ping pongs? That's for added strength. But the next bolt down here, you're going to access from this side and you just put in both bolts and then you're going to have your B2 arms on and all set for your one up trays. Voila, there we are. 
That is your B2 carrier installed. Now you can put your one-up trays on this, you can put your box on the bottom, and you are ready to go for thousands of miles and many years of problem-free adventuring. We have lots of other products and accessories that go on here, mini Sherpas, one-up trays, all kinds of things you can add to this. If you have any questions, you're welcome to call out to our customer support. Remember, this is a maintenance item. You're gonna to wanna to check these hinge bolts periodically to make sure they're tight. You can also mount these tubes at any height. If you don't wanna run a box, you wanna run a medium box, you can lower these down. Uh, that again is the B2 carrier. If you have any questions, like I said, call our staff. We'll be happy to help you out. I hope you enjoy it and feel free to check out our other YouTube videos. We have lots of tips and tricks. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>